Okay, great. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to our 13th um, Impaction video session. Um, we're here today with some of the team from Why Waste out in India. Um, and this one is a special um, Impaction Skype session because the Why Waste team is going to talk to us about um, International Water Day and essentially um, ways we can um, reduce water waste in our own environments. So essentially the purpose of these video sessions is just to um, talk and hear uh, perspectives around the world in terms of positive differences that we can make in our immediate environments. Um, so essentially we're just going to introduce, uh, introduce ourselves really quickly and then we'll go into um, the discussion of the topic as well. Um, so I am uh, Shivani, one of the co-founders of Impaction, um, and I'm located in Chicago, Illinois. Um, Tanvi, do you want to go next? Sure, uh, I'm Tanvi. I am the product manager with Impaction, and I'm located in Boston. Great. Garvita, how about you? Um, hey, everyone. I'm Garvita from India, and I'm the founder of YWAYS. Great. Um, Chetan, would you want to go next? Hi, everyone. I'm Chetan from India. I'm the founder of Kuhn. Thank you. And Jasmine, how about you? Hi, everyone. I'm Jasmine. I'm um, a student, student leadership and engagement coordinator at a university here in Texas. Um, so I'm out in Laredo. Great. Thank you. Uh, Sanjana. Hey everyone, I'm Sanjana. I am the Projects and Communication Manager at YWIS, based in India. Okay, thank you. Uh, Shivank. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Shivank. I am from India. Uh, basically right now I'm building a business over in Bangalore. Awesome. So I'm Tanvi's friend, so pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's much about myself, yeah. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Neil, how about you? Thanks. Neil, can you hear us? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna skip to um, Advita. Hi everyone, I'm Advita. I'm the editor in chief of Byways, based in India. Okay, thank you. And then Roger, who just joined. Uh, Girls, I just got here. Hold okay, on. great. Okay. Wait, wait. I gotta show you where I am. Hold on a second. Okay, hold on. That's me. All right. So uh, look at where I am, everybody. Oh, yeah. Here's this team that I'm working with right now. Oh, hi. This whole thing. Okay. So this is an event for all female, all female, non binary folks. To, and it's a hackathon, and they've been building all weekend. And it's pretty cool. Okay. So I don't know if this is going to be good for the conversation, but that's where I am right now. <laughs> and I'm judging it. But so, uh, I will go back on off the Do you want to introduce video. yourself really quickly? Oh yeah, I'm Roger. <laughs> well, <laughs> I know Shivani. I work with Idea Track. We help early stage companies. Okay, everybody. I'm gonna awesome. go back on the video. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <Okay. laughs> Thank you. Um and then Neil, can you hear us? Yeah, I can okay. hear you. Uh, hi, I'm Neil and I'm working with Waiwish and I'm also located in India. Okay, great. Thank you. I think I got everyone. Um, thank you for introducing yourselves. We have a great team, great amount of people on this um, call today. Um, so just in celebration of International Water Day this past Friday, we asked the Why Waste team to host this video session. Um, Why Waste is an organization that aims at changing the minds of people towards natural resources, prevent wastage, optimize usage, and they want to make every citizen conscious of the amounts that they use. So I'll now turn it over to Gurvitha, the founder of Why Waste. Take it away, Gurvitha. Thank you so much, Shivani. Uh, I think all of us are really excited to be here today. And um, yeah, so, so let's get started. Uh, I'll quickly go over a little bit about Why Waste, and then you know we can switch to um, today's actual discussion, uh, which is all about the future of water. Um, so quickly about why waste, uh, what, like you mentioned, what we want to do is 
change perspectives and mindsets towards this natural resource. What we see is that a lot of people across the globe don't even know the ways in which they waste water. And till the time you don't really point it out to them or you show it to them, they won't realize. And that was the case with me as well um, before I started working with working on why waste. And um, yeah, so again, coming back to why I started, I was very moved by water issues around me. And I found out that a lot of people tend to waste water trivially. And um, so we took up the cause of starting off at restaurants because we found out that 14 million liters of water is wasted every year simply in the water that we leave behind in glasses at restaurants. And that's a shocking number. So, and, and then that kind of like led me into researching more on the trivial ways in which we waste water. And that's when I founded Why Waste, which aims at providing s simple solutions to the global water crisis. So it's, it's all about how every single person can contribute their bit to making a difference. Um, so that's us and without taking up any more time, uh, the first question that I'd like to open the floor with is what really is water to you? You know, what does everyone think water is? And what do you think is the future of this natural resource? So anyone can go. <laughs> Sanjana, you want to start? Sure, Garvita. So water, I feel, is our basic right. It's a, it's a natural resource that we cannot live without. And it's basically everywhere around, sorry, everywhere around we are made of water. Every small thing is made of water. And it's our basic necessity. And we have all the right to have proper access to it. And if you ask about the future of water, it all depends on us, on how we uh, conserve this natural resource and how we take it up that we can get all these billion people who don't have access to water, how we can provide them with this water and how we can quench their thirst. So I'll hand it over to someone else who would like to give their views. Uh, I'll add something to that. So basically, as most of this you covered, uh, Sanjana, so basically, I mean, water is not just, you know, I mean, use it domestic purpose, but it is more, I mean, it's not a necessity for industries also. Okay. I mean, I mean, okay. for any, you know, for any F and B industry from manufacturing to maybe any industry. Okay. That's based on, I mean, uh, the work basically. So, uh, yeah, I mean, so water is something, you know, that is an essential resource. So it has to be, I mean, it has to be uh, conserved for the, I mean, for the future generation. And uh, it has to be taken some initiative because uh, if it is not, then I can, I understand like, you know, you can live without food, but living without water is kind of very difficult. So that's the point I land with. So I can hand over to somebody else. Thanks, Shirag. Uh, yeah, I think with water, it's really ironical. Like, uh, I don't know if you guys know the, uh, the poet, Samuel Coleridge. And he said, water, water everywhere and not a drop to drink. Which is, and he wrote this many years ago and it is actually true <laughs> these days. So I think, like, as Sanjana said, we are made of water, it's everywhere. Yet, there are people suffering who don't even get drinking water, which is their basic right. So I think for the future, even we are going to suffer even more, given our current trajectory. But it's great that people, especially like of our age, have started coming together and making organizations like Why Waste or even Impaction and starting talking about this to do something and take some action. Great. So I think some 
really interesting perspectives that on you know is water and uh, what do you think is the future of water and like sanjana very rightfully said we're all made of, made of water and in fact if you think about it every single thing around us is made of water everything like how everything goes with the price tag at a store everything in the world goes with the water tag and if we actually start seeing the real numbers that go behind making anything you will be shocked to know the amount of water that's actually used i mean something as simple as a pair of jeans actually takes almost 2000 liters to manufacture a burger that you would have like a cheeseburger a regular cheeseburger would be around 650 liters of water just to get that and if it's like a non veg burger it's even more because you know the processing of meat is even it's even more water consuming so it is very important in that sense for us to start realizing water quantities and the water tags and being more mindful of how we use not just water directly as a resource but anything because it really goes into manufacturing absolutely anything and everything and that's what shivang said right that it's used in every industry and that's why it reflects in our daily lives so that's when we begin to see that you know water is everywhere and that's what my next question is to you now imagine if you didn't have water tomorrow right um it would be you just go crazy uh but who do you feel is impacted in the biggest way due to this water mm-hmm. crisis due to water shortage um who around us do you believe it could be someone mm-hmm. around you or it could be someone elsewhere who do you think is the most impacted by water shortage let's have some new voices this time so um can you all hear me just fine Yeah. Yes. Yes, um, yes. I think some of the folks that come to mind are maybe those with obviously limited resources especially as it comes to like mobility. And so if you're living in rural areas where maybe you don't have access um to clean water, sometimes I mean I know that across the world there's um folks who have to travel to get um clean sources of water or relatively clean sources of water. Um And then also when I think about like even in the United States and in my city I think about um home ex- people who are experiencing homelessness and I I just right now start thinking like I wonder where they go I mean obviously there's shelters that are available but like if I'm here and I'm thirsty I can quite literally just go to my faucet and and grab some water and then I've gone hiking before and then um water is very limited there and so you have to really prepare. And so I think about like mobility and like if someone is experiencing homelessness, how are they going to have access to know where they can get clean water or actually move and and walk over there or find some kind of transportation there. So those are I mean across the world I know in rural areas and then also here maybe in the United States and my um home city. So that's just my take. Can you get your yeah yeah go ahead yeah 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 okay uh, so for me i think it would be say manual labors people who actually put in the efforts to breaking the buildings and other manual work cuz for them they come far away from some different places and come here and start working and we've seen it when you are building a building or a bridge or the road or anything you already have limited amount of water available to you and if water is actually over then it's even worse because later on you're not going to have anything left uh, at least for us we we'll have something maybe we can go to our room somewhere there will be some little water stored somewhere for us while for them it's it's like they depend on the fact that okay next morning i'm going to get water from here and if that doesn't come then they go waterless for the day at least that's what i think Yeah, I think I I was going to say something similar just thinking about um like with my parents and their grand their their parents as well how far that they had to travel to individual wells or rivers to actually 
um, have actually bring the water back for not for only for themselves but their families as well. And where our for us, like Jasmine said, that we can just go to a faucet, and um, it it takes less than a second. So it's just trying to put that into perspective where maybe people had to work three times as hard, not even three times, maybe 20 times as hard um, to get a basic resource. Absolutely. And you're kind of just culminating and a little bit expanding on what the three of you said. Um, so I'll start off with what Jasmine mentioned, you know, about the amount of work you need to put in, the, that people across the world are actually putting in just to get like maybe a pot of water, which also is probably not clean, right? Um, it, and, and like Shivani said, it's very important for us to start putting things into perspective because places like Cape Town have actually run out of water. So last year they witnessed day zero where they were at the brink of running out of water. And this year they've actually declared that on this day, this town is going to run out of water. There's not going to be any more. And last August, I had the opportunity to meet someone who actually came from Cape Town. And uh, I also parallelly happened to meet someone who came from Switzerland. And uh, three of us, you know, just sat down and had a discussion on the amount of water that we use on a daily basis. So coming from India and obviously being like in the space of trying to conserve water, mine was comparatively lesser. Uh, but I still had the resource in abundance. The girl who came in from Switzerland was had absolutely no idea that she was actually using four times the amount that she needed. And the girl who came in from Cape Town was actually taught us how to use water. So she, she sat down there and told us that, boss, for this activity, you just need, you know, this much of water. And she survives on less than 40 liters of water per day, which is insanely low. If you start thinking of the amount that you use, you won't even realize that in the first three hours of your day, you've probably consumed over 50, 60 liters of water. And she spends her entire day with less than 40. I mean, there are days they go without that. And you can now imagine that they're not going to get any more. So it's very important, like Shivani mentioned, for us to put into perspective those things. And I think another very interesting point that Neil shared was the daily wage workers, and they, they depend on water on a daily basis. So, you know, it's, it's like they don't know what their life is going to be like the next day because everything is, it comes day by day. They are daily wage workers. They are daily water consumers. So... They, they really don't know what's coming in the future. And then you think about yourself where you just have everything without even asking for it. So I think it's time that we all really put into perspective exactly this and start working on doing our bit to at least at our level conserve water and ask ourselves at the end of each day, how much water did I you know, really save today? And um, so the next question that I have, and this is something that I would love as many people to answer on is, do you think the next war is going to be over water? And um, if yes, how and why? Uh, I, we'll probably start with uh, Chetan or Andhita since you guys haven't gone yet. Okay, I'll take this. Um, I think for sure, if any, um, if if you think of the top five reasons as to why a world war can occur in the next few years, definitely water has to be one of them, because you take out any one of the basic resources that we have today, you can throw the world into a dystopia. It's it's seen in statistics. It's seen in real world situations. We had the Kaveri conflict recently in India where two states went at loggerheads because of something that may seem as simple as water. And um, this, is, this is the case with so many countries across the world that share water supplies. You have any two countries sharing a water body, you take out, you cut down the supply on any side, you can throw that country into turmoil. And this has happened before. In fact, I also read this interesting statistic about how um, food, uh, food production, which is a direct... Um, which which has a direct effect on uh, on water co consumption. You need you need water for food production. If you take food production out of the situation, you can throw a country into political turmoil, social unrest, civil war. Um, the United Nations also released a statistic saying that 
if you don't increase food production by 60 percent by 2050 all these problems like terrorism and and civil war everything will come into the picture so yeah for sure hi Gavita. hi yes sure. uh, yeah so i want to add to this topic so basically I mean, in India, basically, you know, the agriculture is a field where the water is consumed a lot, okay, for agriculture, for farming. So, as you can see, over the past decades, a lot of farmers are committing suicide and it's resulting into, it's a direct impact to the, you know, country GDP, right? As you can see, if you go to Middle East, the, the water is so costly, right? Even India is a direct supporter, I mean, exporter to all the, I mean, uh, I mean, I mean, grains, be it water. So there are, I mean, there are possibility, you know, if the water becomes, you know, it's, it's, it becomes, if there's a scarcity for a water, then definitely there are, there's going to be a civil, I mean, I'm not sure, but yeah, there are possibility like, you know, people are going to fight for it. There could be a possibility of a civil war. Okay. So that's, I mean, that's the whole, I mean, uh, the result of you know if the water becomes uh, i mean don't exist one day so yeah yeah this is can you guys hear me yeah yeah sorry yeah this is a very <laughs> scary picture uh, about people fighting over it but what i see currently what's going on is like how shivank mentioned like in the middle east water is really expensive they don't really have any water as such resource. It gets uh, imported as well a lot. So all these rich countries can still handle it as they will suck out all the water from the poorer countries. And well, the poorer countries, I don't know. It's just they are still like in Africa. It's been a water shortage has been there for years and years, more than decades. And there are even the countries that are coming up saying that, okay, uh, there's water shortage in our regions and UN is supporting them, but there are still a lot of African countries who have not even come in the limelight and people are just dying. So I do not have an answer to the question, but I have a question of my own is like um, with such an acute shortage in so many countries already why do you think is the like what do you think is the reason that there have they have still not received any help uh, yeah can you hear me yeah awesome so i think it'll be slightly unfair to say that they haven't received any help at all because you know there has been some help going out um, thanks to a lot of communities and a lot of organizations who are trying to make a difference. Um, in fact, I was watching a very recent video, I can't recollect by who, but almost 16. So they've created something. So has everyone heard of the uh, Grameen Banks, which was started by Mohammed Yunus? Um, so what they've created is a very similar model, but for water, where there is a water source provided and they provide it at like a much lesser rate um, and you know at, at and the whole point of that is that the workers who used to go and waste four to five hours standing in line to really get that water are now not wasting that time so they have the time that much amount of time to really go and work somewhere else and earn some more money so they can shell out slightly like a little bit for getting their water which is still way lesser than what they were spending in terms of man hours as well as money to get water earlier and if i'm not wrong this was launched by matt damon um and it's already impacted almost like 16 million lives so i think it's one it's very important for us to you know start so so there are i think there are two phases to what you said one is people getting water and the other is water actually existing and people can't get the water if the water doesn't exist. So now coming to people getting water, I think there are places, I think Africa is the most deprived. We cannot, you know, um, 
we cannot argue with that um and it, it is important for organizations to go and start setting up bases there and helping them um we need to think of more innovative solutions on how we can access water without consuming too much of any other form of energy which would probably mean like you know sourcing it from somewhere else etc and i think something very interesting that we uh, that i read in one of the articles that was shared by shivani in the mailer was um about about accessing water through the vapor which is present in the air so that was interesting so innovative solutions like that are definitely a need of the hour and um now coming to how really uh, i mean is there really water left to even give people i think that is a situation that needs every single person to come in and pitch in and you know really uh, see that they at, at least you are doing your bit to save water you know don't don't mindlessly waste that water i think it's impossible for me to sit in this just sit at home and talk about how we can access more water how they can get more water because i don't know their situations that well or i wouldn't be aware of you know how best we can do it but we should just know that problems like this exist and feel privileged about what we have and then obviously in our actions and steps to give back do a bit now coming back to you know the war over water um there there has already been you know something on the similar lines that shivang mentioned uh, between and i think even anvita mentioned this between two states which was karnataka and tamil nadu in india where they fought over water it was almost like a civil war um so yeah it it, it really doesn't seem very far away and in fact if everyone has watched or at least heard of the movie uh, but the James Bond film Quantum of Solace which is about fresh water monopoly which is super super interesting and and I'm actually went down to read some more articles about um companies state that have started acquiring and buying water basically acquiring areas that have excess of fresh water and um and then they're going to basically you know sell that water so they're getting it for free and then they're selling it to you so now it's become a price so you know it's it's high time for us to start hiding water bottles under our beds because it's probably going to be the next currency <laughs> so uh i think yeah that's that's you know how far it's gone but um now coming back to something that is now touching upon what you know tanvi said about helping people get water and the what i had mentioned about you know the this you know these innovative solutions like the water water vapor con condenser which people are using across the globe um what is us doing our bit to save water it's two entire faces of a coin right um now i just want to understand what everyone believes in this and it can also be an equal opinion of which do you think is you know more the need of the hour and which is going to probably have more impact and um which can maybe be executed better or more well enough but basically which out of the two is a better option is it these innovative solutions or is it everyone coming together to you know kind of like do their bit to make a difference You know, I'm wondering often we get into these mindsets of like it has to be one or the other and I'm wondering if it could be both. Like I I mean even in reading some of the articles that were shared um it talked about like price and like how costly it is sometimes to put together some of these technologies and so I think when we come together and do our little bit we can maybe offset the price. Um and then I think understanding maybe also like I guess I have more questions than answers right now. Some of the questions that are running through my head is like how is it that maybe in the western hemisphere we're able to have an overflow or abundance of water production and for the most part most people have access to clean water. I even buy water and and that was so interesting to think about but then on um the other side of the world you, you almost think like how 
what is it that like I, I just don't understand, like how, how is it that we have access and then other folks don't? Like what is it that's missing? Is it knowledge about how to access water? Is it physically, like the water is just not physically there, which I'm not sure that's the problem. Maybe it's just tapping into it and making sure that it's clean and available, but those are some of the questions that I have on my mind, so. Can I piggyback off of that? Cause I had a, I had a similar question. Um, the I wanted a like we had this Flint water crisis here in Michigan, um, and it was about detecting lead poisoning in the water. And it started in 2012. People ignored the signs that there was lead poisoning until there was brown water coming from their faucets. And in Flint water in Flint, Michigan, um, it, it's interesting how we can tie that into people's socioeconomic backgrounds as well. So it was predominantly, I believe, it was like four over 50% African American and people living in more impoverished communities in and those are the ones who are adversely affected by um poor water quality um so it was just it i i wanted to piggyback off of Jasmine because I mean she talked about how we have an overflow of water here in the US um but the same like i think Gervitha mentioned that um like the content the continent of Africa might be facing this in higher proportions, um, but even on a micro scale, if you wanted to like scale back in and think about, okay, there are actual, um, there are people here in the US and people from like these racial backgrounds that might be, that might be adversely affected in higher regards than others. And you see it here as well. So I just wanted to like, see if anyone had thoughts or Gerbet that you had anything to say about that as well. Something to the, to the following question. Yeah. I'm going to answer the, to the following question. Go ahead. So, so yeah, I'll go ahead. So basically, as she mentioned, okay, this technology and innovations regarding water from here, okay, and, and as well as, I mean, we, we all go ahead and conserve water as a society. So there are two, basically there are two concepts over here. Okay. What I believe is to such a large population, conveying the idea and spreading the awareness to preserve water. Most importantly, people are almost habitual to use the water to their specific limits, whatever they're using right now. Okay. To let them down, I mean, not let them down, but let them their limits of using the water per day. It's kind of a challenging. Okay. It will take time to create such an awareness. So I think it has to go hand in hand for maybe a short term, we can go for maybe such technologies. Okay. That can have a huge impact basically along by side by side, we can go for awareness that can reach to different kinds of people because there are, I mean, there are societies which are unaware of, I mean, such a big issue also, right? So this way, I think this can be, you know, can be impacted to a larger number of people. And this can become, a, I mean, this can become one of the, I mean, I mean, one of the topics that could reach to people and they can actually, you know, they can actually work on it and they can actually understand that this is actually the problem so that, you know, they themselves, they take initiative and lower their limits and start, you know, I mean, saving water. So, yeah. That's pretty much from my side. Hey guys, uh, sorry for the minor um, technical issue. Um, I hope I didn't miss much and I'll just keep my video off for better uh, connectivity. Uh, so quickly, I was just listening into what Shivang was saying and yes, it is definitely very, I, I don't know where you began, but because I missed a bit of it, but yes, it's definitely very important for, you know, each one of us to start doing our bit, but coming back to where I was with Jasmine and Shivani's question, and I don't know if that's been answered already, but we'll quickly share my opinion. Uh, one, I definitely believe that it is the physical presence, but the second, I think we need to understand that setting up of, you know, industries and developing all or development areas and all of these things tends to happen in rural areas. Um, and 
that kind of sucks up all of the resources. So industrialization, when it happens, it happens in uh, in all of it doesn't happen in our cities, right? It 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 happens in okay, it, not in the terms of obviously growth. It does happen in the cities, but when I talk about really setting up industries, that happens in the rural areas because there's a lot of space, there's an abundance of resources, and these kind of tend to suck up all of the resources, which deprives the people of what is required. And obviously, industries having an upper hand, etc kind of you know just come and seize everything and then the whole hierarchy comes into play where the rich get richer and the poor get poor so um i think that is another big big issue which has a very very different aspect to it not only in terms of water but in terms of all resources that are out there um water being one of the key ones but yes i think uh this is that is one that is my opinion but yes anyone else can you know just share this and i just want to uh flag that we have three minutes left as well um and like another thing is uh Gervith, i wanted to ask you like what is um what are some of the takeaways that we can uh think about from this uh video sessions and what are even small steps that we can do um in our own lives and i know you mentioned this before but i just want to flag this real quick okay so i think since we're a little bit low on time what i'll do is i'll give the floor to sanjana and anrita who have recently been helping work on this really cool module that we've come up with at why waste called the how to save 100 liters of water every day module which is basically how every person can do their bit every day to save at, at least 100 liters of water um and i'm very much stressing on at least because you can save a lot more guys uh so i'll give it to sanjana and anjita maybe sanjana you can start and they both can you know probably just give you a few pointers which would you know help in this respect and then we can wrap up with today and thank you so much Shivani, for the opportunity Okay, so uh, when we were doing the 100 liters of water manual, the module, so we found data which actually surprised us that where we are using water which need not be used. Uh, for example, our normal flush in toilets take about 13.6 liters for every flush. Whereas if you install a dual flush system, you consume only six liters of water. So that's a very massive amount of water which can be conserved by us. And also another thing that we found out was, uh, you know, when we are washing our driveways or our cars and plants, or if you're watering our plants, we don't really require a hose for it. We can just, it's a bucket of water is more than enough for it. And if you're cleaning cars, you can just use a like a wet cloth to wash your cars. And that actually helps in covering all parts of your cars rather than just washing it up with a hose pipe. Because that takes around 200 to 300 liters of water just in one wash, which is a very big amount. And I think it all depends on our habits where we can conserve water even in the, even like one drop matters now. With the current situation and if we can even say that one water one drop of water a billion people can have access to it a billion people can drink that water and they can have more and more resources available to them because i feel everything is connected to water like food in agriculture too now most of the villages are uh, most of the agricultural sites are switching to drip irrigation system because that saves again around uh, 500 to 600 liters of water for your agricultural products so i feel when we did the modules it was a really shocking statistics that we found how people waste water which is actually not necessary even while you're brushing or you're shaving or washing your face you don't really need to leave the tap open you can just shut it off and again open it when it's required or even when you're taking a shower or it's more beneficial to use a bucket of water rather than a shower because that again saves around 
100 to 200 liters approximately. And if you're taking like two to three showers of a day, I don't think it's really required because one shower can really help a lot of people out there who really don't have access to even a bath. So I feel I'll hand it over to Anvita to explain the rest of what. Okay, so I think Sanjana covered most of it because um, what we learned while making the modules and some things that we've just read around the internet or things that you know old people tell tell us about the the times that they did not have waters. Um, I gathered that all you can do is stick to the basics. So whether it's using, as she said, a dual flush system. I've uh, read about this concept of unless it's yellow keep it mellow which means that if it's if you're going to urinate then don't flush now i'm not saying go that far but definitely if you have a dual flush system in place you're cutting down more than half of the water wastage than you would with a single flush system um then a couple of small things like that instead of washing your car yourself take it to a car wash because there they regulate the amount of water they use you're, you're not throwing around water as much. Um, they have a quantifiable amount. Everything that they do is measured. So that's one of the options. Um, when you're washing your vessels, either use a water intensive dishwasher, or if you're doing it yourself, make sure that you're not using a running tap. Instead, use the double dish concept where you dip your dish twice, once in a bowl of cold water, once in a bowl of hot water. And that way you, you don't have running water being wasted. Um, a lot of other things like, as she said, keep your taps closed when you're washing your face, when you're having a bath, when you're, when you're in the soaping phase, keep the, keep the taps closed. Just, just stick to the basics, that's it. Awesome, thank you so much, ladies. And I know that uh, we do have two minutes left and we would love to hear your feedback. So um, we're going to stop recording this call, um, but we just want to thank all of the people who will be watching this uh, online for watching this video session and um, just to check out a lot of uh, our website at myimpaction.com to continue this conversation around water and water waste reduction. Um, and then also to subscribe to our YouTube channel. But thank you all for joining us online, um, and we'll see you next time.